Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and in this tutorial I will show you how to create simple flying AI. Let me show you how it looks like. We have here a drone that's flying from one spot to another and he's also shooting at you. That's just a bit of a bonus thing. So let's stop wasting your time and get to it. Alright, let's get started. I'm using just third person template from Unreal Engine, nothing you don't already know. So. First of all, we will have to create some blueprint for our AI. Let's use actor and we will call it AI drone underscore BP ID label. I forget about that. So let's ignore that and we will add here component and let's do just a sphere and then for example, some shapes that will make it look more drone like. It's just visual part so you can set it to whatever you want. So now let's add here some locations that your droid will be moving in between. So let's add here an arrow and make sure that it's not under sphere or cube. It's just under a default scene root. And let's add here at least two of them for now. Later on, we will add more of them. And you can, of course, change it in the blueprint, but I would recommend to put that droid right here. And now if you scroll down right here, you can take those arrows and position them where you want. Let's put one in here and the other in here. So now we need to set it up that it will move between these two arrows and we can't use any nav mesh because Unreal Engine 4 doesn't support navigational mesh in three dimensions, only in two. Hopefully it will be something that we will see in Unreal Engine 5, we can only hope. Let's use event begin play and what we will do here is to set timer. Set timer by event, put that event here. So add custom event and call it moving and let's just disable it here and connect it right here timer basically works like event tick so it fires several times and you can specify here how often you want it to go so let's try 0.02 that should be fine now we need to set up a float so click here on plus call it alpha and let's switch it to float right here and we will set it, we will actually before it will start, we will set it to zero. Just to be sure that it always starts on zero. Then what you want, every time it will shoot, let's take your alpha and add something to it. So alpha, get alpha plus, and now basically it depends how smooth you want your movement to be. Let's try also 0.02, so let's, we will see what it will do. All right, connect it. And after you do that, let's take your sphere that will move our whole drone and set its world location. So set world location. Now for that location, we will use LARP. So let's from here get origin location well, or location where it is right now. So get world location. And from here, we will take simple LARP. So put here LARP vector. And very nice and as you would expect our alpha will come right here i will connect it and then explain how it all works and as our final location right now let's just set up here this arrow we want it to go to first arrow so get here world location and see if it all works connect it to our new location all right connect it after alpha and make sure that you start it after event begin place so after event like in play, we want moving. All right, and let's try to simulate it. And look at that, our drone is moving towards there. That's very cool, very proper. And now if I change it to arrow two, it will move to the other one. Look at that. All right, now let me quickly explain it and then we'll continue to make it a bit more sophisticated. So what happens here after you call moving, it will set your alpha to zero, which is pretty important. Otherwise it would continue right here where it started. Then it will call timer, which will fire every 0.02 seconds. And every 0.02 seconds, it will add something to alpha. A higher this will be, the less smooth it should be, but also faster it will be. So you need to find the value you want. And that alpha is important because we are using it for our LARP. And LARP basically goes from one location to other location. And alpha is used to basically how much it should blend from the first location to the other location. That's why we have to set up it dynamically. Just a quick thing, I'm making new VR game every week. So if you are interested in that or just want to see more stuff that I personally make, somewhere here is my Instagram. I post there as often as I can. So 
follow it if you are interested. All right, I hope that that's pretty clear. So let's now add here something that will make it a bit more fun. So we will add here another custom event. So custom event, and that will be find next location. And what that will simply do is to supply us with these coordinates. So before we do that, let's add here a few more arrows. Let's add here at least six of them. Now we have to go into our map and place them somewhere in here. Theoretically, if you wanted, you could add those arrows in player character, so that it will be always around the player or something like that. That's up to you. Right here, I'm going to do it just in the map. You can, of course, change height as well to make it a bit more interesting. So now, on our find next location, you want to take all of these arrows and make array of them. So make array. That's just that's basically using array without actually using it as a variable. So connect it in here, all of them. You want to get a copy. And you know that you, here you have six of them. So what you can do is to put here random integer in range and set maximum to six. But to make it a bit more, a bit more dynamic, let's put it here. Let's take it from here and take our last index because the last index will be always last one here. Connect it to our maximum and that thing will be our location. So let's take our B location from LARP, promote it to variable. Let's call it location to move. And you want to send set it right here. So find next location. I want to set it. Then take location from one of these arrows because it will randomly choose one of these six. And you want to get its world location and connect it right here. And let's make it looping. So right here I will use a delay. Again, let's set here a random float in range and let's go between three seconds to five seconds. No, let's do two seconds to five seconds. And after that happens, let's just call find next location again. So it will every two or five seconds it will change that location. And actually I would almost forget, but of course have to uh, call our moving. So you want to deselect it here and we will call our moving here because now when we have location to move, we can call our moving. So it will find location of one of these arrows, then it will start moving. And after two to five seconds, it will find new location, start moving again, blah, blah, blah. So on our event plugin play, we want to not fire moving, but fire find next location. So find next location right here. All right, let's see if it all works. It's moving from one and to another. Maybe moving a bit too slow for my taste. Also, delay between them is way too long. But the system here works pretty well. So, let's change it. Do, do, do. Timer is probably fine. Let's add 0.4. That should be twice as fast. And of course, let's decrease this thing. Let's go between 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. And also, let's make it a bit more fun. I want it to rotate. So, take your sphere and on event kick. You want it to rotate, add local rotation, da, da, da. and we will use, of course, our sphere. Just to test it, let's try X1. No, it's not X, so it will be Z probably. Let's try one. Yep, that's pretty cool. So now what I will do to make it a bit more dynamic and a bit more fun. Ah, uh, okay, let's connect this on kick, that's fine. You want to split structure pin here. Oh, come on, split structure pin here and promote your Z to variable. So delta rotation Z. And every time you fire that find next location, you want to start by changing the variable where it's moving. So it will always rotate a bit differently. And we, we have seen it on one, so let's default set on two. And on our find next location, let's set it to random integer in range and let's move between 
minus five to five. All right, now click on play. And look at that. That's interesting. Oh, it's moving a bit too fast for a change, but doesn't matter. Sometimes it just stays on the place, etc, etc. You can of course play with it and make it a bit more interesting. You can change the rotation based on how far he has to travel, etc, etc, etc. That's up to you. So now let's add here one bonus thing. I will show you how to make it shoot at you, because that's really simple and it's always fun to shoot at people. Let's be real here. For that we will need something that will be shot at player. So let's put here blueprint class. Ac oh, actor, yeah, that's fine. Call, rename it to bullet underscore bp open that thing and let's just put here a cube a bit more projectile like shape because we will add here let's set it let's set it as scene root and add here projectile component and what you want is to disable gravity so let's set projectile gravity to zero Initial speed, let's do 500, max speed 500, velocity 500 as well. Click on play. Okay, we have to put it in the game, of course. And now, simulate. That looks pretty cool. If I rotate it, it should fly like that. Wonderful. And let's, of course, disable collision on our cube because we don't want it to block anything, so no collisions. So now what you want is to go into your AI droid and create here another custom function, another custom event. You can of course for some of these use functions, etc. etc. That's more of an optimization thing. So get here custom event and be it shoot at player. And we will need another arrow for that. So let's put it an arrow. And make sure that this thing is under a sphere. And let's make sure that it's visible. Oh, it's already visible. Make sure that it's not hidden in game. You want to see it. If you simulate, you can see that it's moving. And what we will, what you will want to do is on once once shoot at player happens, you want to get it. And what you want is to find a look at player. So find look at rotation. Wonderful. And here in our arrow 6, let's set world rotation to this. And our start will be, of course, arrow location. So get world location. And as our target, we'll just get player. So get player pawn. And again, you can copy this thing and just connect it to your target. I connect it after a shoot at player, of course, and just to test it, let's find here our event. Oh, we already have event -y, right? Yep, and we will fire that function. So, shoot at player. I have a shoe, not sure, well, who cares? And let's see if it works well. You, of course, can simulate, you have to really play it. And look at that, that arrow should be always looking at you. Well, that's wonderful, that's just what we needed. Because right now, Every time it happens, well, not on tick, we will also spawn actor from class. That will be, of course, our projectile. And I forgot how I called it. Uh, it's bullet BP. So bullet underscore BP. And as our spawn transform, let's use this thing. So get world transform. And let's say that I want to shoot it every sec every two seconds. Let's fire it after event begin play after next location. So shoot at player delay every two seconds and connect it right here. Right, compile and click on play. And now look at that. Oh, look at that. You get drawn moving around and shooting at you. What more can you want from life and your flying AI? Alright, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. Huge thank you to everyone on Patreon. You are real helpful there. And if you want project files for this, they are on that Patreon for any tier. So hopefully see you there. And that's about it. Sort of fancy out.